Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Hello and welcome to One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. What are you seeking? This is a collective reading. All right, and I just randomly pulled out a bunch of decks. Um, we're just going to see where it takes us. We're going to go with the flow. Okay. What do we need to know today? Judgment, the Magician, Ten of Swords, Nine of Cups, and the Three of Swords. Right, I can see that you are going to be liberated from something. You're walking away from some heart aches, some heartbreaks. Okay, maybe you're feeling judged by some of the magic that you have. Not everybody understands it. So you need to free yourself, you need to walk away in order to feel good within yourself to release this heartache. You are making magic happen. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Okay, this is definitely challenging. This is an emotional thing. But you need to release it. You need to manifest what you want so that you can feel free. So that you can have your abundance. Okay, you're going to sew this back together, this heartache. All right, this is a one night ultimate werewolf. This is actually a game, but I like these little cards, so I wanted to pull them out. All right, so we have the werewolf, the werewolf again, and Tanner. So this looks like somebody might be of a white trash. Somebody, have the werewolf in the background here. Well, it looks like they all have it. You know, somebody who is a bum, who isn't clean. Somebody who gets beat up a lot. All right, the werewolf comes out on a full moon. And we have two of them. So they're looking for their prey, somebody that they can beat up. Okay, and that looks like you. Somebody's trying to judge you and beat you up. Fairies, I am. It's very red. It's 
reminds me of the devil card. Even though I, this is just like ram horns. This is the um, I am, right? So don't let the devil take a hold of you. Know your worth. Have your own foundation of who you are. Okay, follow your north node. It's five, this is about changes. Okay, follow your life's purpose. Some people don't understand your magic. And they wanna beat you down for it. Your poet, okay, a light attribute, express soul insights in symbolic language. This looks like Oprah. <laughs> and we have two doves here, doves mate for life. It's definitely a, about a love language. Shadow attribute, turns a lyric gift to negative or destructive effect, right? So be careful of the words that you use because words do hurt. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not a true statement. Words do hurt. And sometimes they hurt more than the physical beatings. So don't let others and what they're saying about you affect who you are. Virgin. Light attribute, maintaining symbolic purity of heart and spirit. Shadow attribute, fear of intimate union. Maybe you're having a collaboration with somebody and others are tearing you down for it. Maybe the person that you're trying to have a collaboration with is tearing you down because they're afraid of this union. Gossip. Light attributes awakens consideration for your feelings of others, honoring trust. Shadow attributes thrives on the power of passing on private or secret information, betraying confidences. Right, somebody's betraying, uh, betraying you and this union that you're trying to portray with someone and they're telling all your secrets right they're telling your secrets on how you create this magic and you don't want that out there that's for you but this person doesn't understand because they're a virgin they don't they don't know about magic they're scared of it they're scared of your power, so they're trying to tear you down in any way that they possibly can by gossiping about you. There's no trust there, and you're heartbroken by this. Okay, two in two shakes of a lamb's tail. This is another game. Um, 
never use these, so let's see what comes out here. Are these just backwards? These are just backwards. Okay. So I'm going to pull those three because they were all backwards. And I thought they were just directions, but they're not. Okay. Disclose a secret. Hint, you might get scratched. Let the cat out of the bag. This phrase is said to have come from the master at arms on a British skip, taking the cat o' nine tails from the bag, preparatory to whipping an er errant seaman. Since the connection between this action and disclosing a secret is hard to define, a reference to a country market trick is more acceptable. A dishonest merchant would substitute a cat for a valuable pig. The bag containing the animal would not be opened until the buyer had bought it home, brought it home and the merchant had vamoosed. Letting the cat out of the bag any earlier would have disclosed the trick. The saying probably dates from the mid 1700s, right? This is disclosing your magic. This is disclosing the trick by gossiping about it, telling others your secrets. This is being deceitful. This is putting something else into the bag other than what you thought it was and not discovering it until later. So they're being very sneaky so that you can't have any rebuttal about this because you've already gone home and they're already long gone. Avoiding alcoholic beverages. Pre-SUV. On the wagon. Water carts were used to wet down dusty roads in the 19th century. Those who gave up alcoholic beverages during prohibition like to say that although they felt thirsty, they would rather hop onto the water cart for a drink than break their promise to quit alcohol. Hence, I'm on the water cart became the standard phrase for temperance. Wagon soon replaced cart on the expression was shortened to the current on the wagon, first recorded in the early 1900s. The opposite expression, to be off the wagon, dates from the same period and was used in Extra Dry to Burt Taylor in 1906. It was better to have been on and off the wagon than never to have been on it at all. All right, so this actually goes back to my last reading um, about having influences that are not good for you, right? To quit alcohol, to quit drugs. Um, this person is kind of on and off the wagon with you. They're being deceitful right they're pretending like they're nourishing you in some way with a union but they're actually uh, blurring your vision arrive at the root of the matter military vips get down to brass tacks some believe that this phrase which dates back to the turn of the 19th century, relates to the brass tacks used on in upholstery. And it may have been used in a cockney rhyming game to mean hard facts. But the most common understanding of the saying has to do with early shopkeepers inserting brass tacks along the edge of their counters, providing a convenient means for measuring fabric 
When a customer finished looking over the available stock and had determined what to buy, the cloth was set on the counter and measured ascertaining a price was getting down to brass tacks. So somebody has a price, right? There's a price over your head, so to speak, right? They're manipulating you in some way. Maybe they're trying to um, scam you and not give you as much fabric as you have paid for. Which is interesting because this also goes back to my last reading, which I'll have to put in uh, the ending here so that you can go back and look at those ones. With the furniture and about being warm and having joy. And this person is robbing you of that. Fifteen, big bold vision. This is about harmony. So bring back the harmony. Continue on with your vision. You have a vision. Don't let anybody take that away from you. It's not for theirs for the taking. Don't let them have that control. Don't let them be the werewolf to beat you up. You're creating harmony with your magic. Okay. I am fucking made for this. You were made specifically for these times. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Your mission is to help interpret the messages Earth sends us so we can move forward toward ultimate community, peace, love, truth, and constructive creativity. We cannot do... That if we deny our magic, our powers, and our miracles today, see if you can make this today, see if you can make peace with yourself and shift your mind away from fear and disease and into love and acceptance. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you until you cry or laugh. You are loved. You are protected. You are perfect just the way you are are you are fucking made for this okay you are made to create this magic don't let anybody tear you down this is your calling this is your north node this is your life's purpose this is who you are don't let these other people who are disclosing your secrets talking smack about you, denying you of what you're trying to do. Be yourself. Free yourself from the judgment, from the heartache. Walk away from it. Okay, so that is your reading for today. Thank you for being with me today. And if you found this to be useful, please share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next reading. I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, 
check the links in the description box.